close your eyes and say to yourself now, I am. And look at all your stuff and just let it be. Don't wish it any other way than it is and just say, I am. And allow your personality, all your problems, your body and all its problems, your social scene and economic scene and all its problems, see it all as just the workings of nature, like trees grow and trees die and rivers and fish and brooks and all that. Just look at it all and allow it space and see that within it all, I am. I am. Hello, my name is Greg Braden, and I'd like to welcome you to this all-new presentation of The Divine Matrix, Bridging Time, Space, Miracles, and Belief. In the last episode, we saw how the course of world events follows natural cycles that can be known and calculated as what we called fractal time. Well, in this episode, we'll apply these very principles on a personal level as we discover the cyclic patterns of our relationships and the choice points for the most potent opportunities of positive change in our lives. By sharing my experience, you can see parallels. I'm not saying exactly the same thing has happened in your life, but maybe you can see parallels in your life and begin to apply how these things work. The pattern was the same. It was playing out again, a pattern of loss and betrayal. The next time this pattern showed up in my life was the last time. And that's the really good news of being able to recognize these patterns. I was 44.99 years old when this pattern repeated in my life. So from the time that my father left at the age of 11 until the age of 44, those essentially three decades is where the pattern repeated again and again until I had the wisdom to recognize it. At the age of 44.99 years, there was again a loss and a betrayal. Uh, it was a business betrayal followed by the healing of a friendship and the healing of that business relationship. And that is what changed the pattern. The loss occurred, but I had changed the way that I perceived the loss. In the past, I had simply cut the ties with those relationships and moved on. And this time I did something different. This time I went back and I talked to these people. And I said, you know, look, we have a history, we're friends, we've been through this together, what's happening? And it was the the ability to consciously communicate uh, in a way without judgment. And there's a, a whole story, a whole workshop about how I arrived at that place. It has to do with the mirrors of relationship. But it was my ability to reconcile what had happened without the judgment that freed me from the cycle. Now, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how this works. Because it's fascinating. I mentioned that the patterns are repeat again and again until something changes the patterns. One of the things that allows those patterns to repeat, and I'm going to go back to the mirrors, one of the things that allows those mirrors to show up again and again and again in our lives, the mirror of judgment, for example, it is the judgment itself. The judgment, when we judge our experiences, that judgment is like a magnet. It is an energetic magnet that promises that the same experience will come to you again and again and again until you, you demagnetize the experience, until you release that judgment. Once you do, and this is so powerful, once you release the judgment of one experience and one relationship in one place in your life, there is what is called the cascade effect. The cascade effect is you will see the ripples of that healing permeate all the other relationships in your life that are based on that same principle. So the judgment in a business relationship, for example, once it's healed, or the judgment in an intimate relationship with a partner or a spouse or with a sibling, once that's healed, that healing ripples throughout your work, throughout your friendships, throughout your business relationships, 
throughout every relationship you have without going to each relationship individually and saying, okay, this one's healed, okay, this one's healed, this one's healed. This is the value of understanding these patterns in our lives. So at the age of 44.99 years, I healed the judgment of loss and betrayal and what it had meant in my life. And the moment that I did that, that pattern shifted. I had created a seed for a new cycle and the seed is what sets into motion a pattern of energy that will repeat on a rhythmic basis until something changes the pattern. Or maybe you don't want to change the pattern. If you've changed the pattern in a healthy way to abundance and success and trust, then there's every reason to believe that that pattern will continue in your life again and again and again until something changes. And if you don't want to change that pattern, it doesn't have to change. And I want to give you some examples of really good things that can happen from these kinds of changes as well, because the fractal cycles work for good and beautiful and powerful and positive changes, as well as the deeply significant emotional changes of, of loss and betrayal. After my father left our family, my mother, my younger brother and I, he's four years younger, we were left to be a family on our own. It was completely unexpected, at least uh, to my mother. And I'll just tell you, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it was uh, uh, an abusive, alcoholic, uh, very dysfunctional family. So for me, even though it was about loss and betrayal, uh, I was not that unhappy when my father left because we had relief in the family. On the one hand, and on the other hand, things changed for me. And this was back in the 1960s. Uh, we had no money. Uh, my mother had been a homemaker and a parent. She had not been in the workplace and she found herself going back into the workplace and found how difficult it was to make enough money to cover the expenses for a household and, and two young boys. Uh, and I went to work at an early age to help contribute to that. I remember the very first time, the very first time that our supervisor handed me a physical paycheck. And he looked at me and what he said to me, he said, this is a man's wage for a man's work. A man's wage for a man's work. And it gave me the freedom to contribute to my family. And it set into motion a powerful seed for me. And that seed has continued with me throughout my life. It was the seed of abundance and success because I understood that by my work, something good could come from that. I'm going to just share something else with you, and this is very personal. At the age of 11, when the family broke up, my mom gave me a book, and she said, I think this book will help you through a difficult time. And many of you I know know this book. It was a book that was called The Prophet, and it was written by a man called Khalil Gibran. A very, very powerful book. Each chapter was just a, a couple of paragraphs or maybe a couple of pages, but they spoke volumes to me. And I remember there was a chapter on work. And Khalil Gibran, he ended that chapter by simply stating, work is love made visible. Work is love made visible. That meant something to me and that became my anchor in life. And every job that I took, whether I was loading boxcars with cat litter in 50 pound bags or working in a copper mill or working in a fabric mill or working in a restaurant, no matter what it was, for me, it wasn't about the work. It was about my love made visible. How good of a job could I do no matter what I was doing? And that thinking, that thinking is part of what this seed was all about. It's why that paycheck at 16 was so important. So I just wanna share with you, at 16 years old, I planted the seed for abundance and success. And that seed continued. At the age of 25.88 years, I had my first corporate position I was hired to work in the corporations as a geologist, and I've shared that story with you from what happened in the universities. The next fractal, and that, that 25.88, it's exactly on a fractal cycle. The next fractal cycle, using the time code calculator, the next age was exactly 35.7 years. 35.7 years is a very significant year for me. I was working in the corporations during the Cold War, I was a software designer and I received an award for the job that myself and my department had accomplished during that time and the invitation to continue with another project. And I knew that I would not be there to see that project through. 
That was the year I left the corporations and began writing full time and exploring the principles that you and I are talking about today. It's exactly when it happened. My next fractal cycle was the age of 45.6. At 45.6, the fruits of my labor from leaving the corporations unfolded as my first corporate publishing offer. It was at that time, uh, Random House offered me a publishing contract. I had self-published two books. They were successful enough for Random House to come and invite me to, to write a third book with them. And as I say, the rest is history. So I'm giving you examples. All of these things I just shared, you can see them on the time code calculator. When I planted that seed of abundance and success at the age of 16, I set into motion a pattern of energy. And that pattern is a pattern that has stayed with me on another level, beyond the hurt, beyond the loss, beyond the betrayal, because these patterns play out this way in our lives. They play out again and again and again. Now, I want to mention something about these personal patterns. It also applies to the global patterns that we talked about earlier. Because nature doesn't turn on a dime. You know, I had a supervisor once, and he said, change in the world is kind of like change on a big ship on the ocean. He'd been a, a Navy captain during the Vietnam War. And he said, you know, when a battleship wants to turn around and go back the other way, it doesn't turn on a dime. It makes a big, long, slow turn to begin going back the other way. Our cycles tend to work this way as well. They don't end at midnight on a specific day just because the cycle says it ends. What's really interesting, and again, this applies to your personal cycles as well as global cycles, is that there is a buffer that I mentioned in the last episode. What I did not mention then, and I'd like to share with you now, is how to calculate that buffer, what it's determined by. The buffer between when one cycle ends and the next begins, where that choice point lies, it is determined by a factor of how long the original cycle is. And I want to give you the number for that factor. So the factor that is applied to the length of the previous cycle is a fraction. It is 0 0.0070243. I'm going to say this again. 0 0.0070243. If you apply that fraction to the length of the cycle you've calculated in years, it will tell you approximately how long the buffer for that cycle is. And the conditions for the previous cycle, as well as for the new ones, are both happening during that period of time. This is your choice point. This is when your choices become most potent. And once again, you can choose at any time. We have free will to choose at any time. But if you want to stack the deck in your favor within the rules of nature's rhythms and cycles, the choice point is the place to do just that. So the value of everything we've just done in this episode for personal cycles, and what I'm going to say applies to the global cycles as well, is first to even recognize that these cycles are playing out, that things are not just happening for no reason. You know, if, if there's a lot of chaos in your life or a lot of chaos in the world, it's not that your life is coming apart at the seams for no reason or if the world is falling apart for no reason. We step back and look at the big picture. We're able to see that all of the chaos that we see up close actually falls into patterns of beautiful order that makes sense from the larger scale. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when we begin to recognize the patterns, we also begin to see where the patterns end, where they begin. All of a sudden, these are the aha moments. First of all, you say, aha, wow, look at that pattern is played out in my relationships, in my most intimate relationships. Look at the patterns of sabotage, where I've sabotaged myself, based upon events that happened so long ago, I don't even remember when they were. Or look at those patterns of loss and betrayal. And third, when we recognize those patterns, we recognize, once again, the places where our choices are most potent. So the key to everything that we're saying right now is to recognize, number one, that these patterns exist. But number two, you and I are not slaves to these patterns. These patterns direct general fields of energy. And when the conditions of a seed event 
may repeat in our lives, we are free will beings in this world and we have the opportunity to make our choices at any time when we recognize that the patterns are actually playing out. So we've just covered a lot of ground and I'm gonna acknowledge that for a lot of people, this is a very, very different way to think about our world as well as our lives. So I wanna reiterate a couple of points as we go into the next episode of The Divine Matrix. We talk about the cycles. These are rhythms and patterns that are playing out. However, they do not dictate precisely what happens in our lives. They simply show us when the conditions, the opportunities for events to unfold are appearing in our lives. Once we recognize these natural rhythms and these natural cycles, we can work with the rhythms, work with the cycles to bring about positive change in the world as well as positive change in our lives. Common people around the world are doing the uncommon. I mean, it is literally the Netflix of spirituality.